Okay, in this video we're going to be going over how to solve a problem like this on a network engineering exam such as the CCNA. The question will be which ports are going to be forwarded and we're going to go through how to figure that out. It's easy if you think about it like a logic puzzle. So the things to remember are first, which with the lowest bid is the root bridge, all its ports are forwarded. Then after you decide those ports, you find out the root port on each switch, which is going to be the port with the best path to the root bridge. After that, on any links where there's a tie, you take the interface with the lowest cost, and that's the one that's forwarded. And then on, actually, that's if there's not a tie. If there is a tie, then the interface with the neighbor switch that has the lower bid is the one that is forwarded. And that sounds confusing in the abstract, but we're going to go through it step by step. And it's pretty easy if you just approach it like a logic puzzle. So first thing, let's find the root bridge. We have the MAC addresses here. It doesn't tell us any of the switch priority, which means we can assume that they all have the default priority, 32768, meaning that the MAC address, the lower MAC address, if the priority ties, the switch with the lower MAC address is going to be the root bridge. So now I can draw. We've got these three MACs are lower, and they tie up to this place here where this one is 12, and then 34, and then 56. So that means this one is going to be the root bridge, and all its ports are going to be ported. Now that we know the root bridge, we can figure out what the root ports are going to be by observing which ports on these other switches have the best cost to get to this switch, the root switch. Now, um, we can measure things both by hop count, how many links does the packet have to go through, or the frame have to go through, or uh, what's the speed. There are uh, cost calculation numbers for the speed of different interfaces, but if you can't remember them, you can reason out that it's going to take a lot of individual links at a higher speed to be less than a lower speed. The old numbers, I believe, 100 is 19, and then a gigabit is something like 4. They updated the numbers, and they changed them to allow for gradations between interfaces that are much faster. It's a good idea to memorize those, but even if you don't have those memorized, you can still reason out a problem like this. So in this case, we have 100, 100 gigabit, and then gigabit, gigabit. So the two gigabit hops are going to be significantly faster than anything involving 100 megabit, even if it's just one hop. This is going to have the lowest cost. That means this is the root port for switch one. And since this is the root port for switch one, we also know that this port has to be forwarded, and this port also has to be forwarded. And we know that's the case uh, because if this is blocked or this is blocked, the frames wouldn't be able to reach from switch one to switch three. So we can already block some or unblock some of those. And we can already block another one here because we noticed that if this port were forwarded, we would create a loop here. So we have to block this one. Now, just with deciding the root port of switch one, we already have been able to learn that a bunch more ports are going to be blocked and ported. So on this link here, well, actually, let's go to switch two. We have one gigabit hop, and then the other ones are going to involve 100 meg. So we know this is going to be the root port. And then on this switch, this is going to be the root port because it has the fewest hops and the fastest speed. So now the only ports we have left are the two on this 100 megabit link and the two on this 100 megabit link. Now, when figuring out which of these ports has the lowest cost, it's important to remember that cost is only added to a circuit, a layer two circuit, when the frame exits the port. And what that means is, if we're going to think about logically sending a frame from this port on this switch, it's already inside the switch. It doesn't have to go through this port unless it goes out in that direction. So if, if we're looking at the cost from this port, it's to go in through the switch and make two gigabit hops and reach the root bridge. Whereas if we're looking at this particular port on this switch, it's also inside the switch already. We can think of it as being inside the switch. It goes through one gigabit hop to reach the root bridge. So this one, it goes one, two, and this one goes one, and these are all gigabit links. So we know that of these two ports, this port has a better cost, a lower cost to the root bridge. And since they can't both be forwarded or we would create a loop, this one has to be blocked. And so the only two ports remaining are the ports on this link. Now, if we use our same same mental trick, thinking about the frame being inside the switch, it comes out here. So if it's in this port, it comes out here and it has one, one gigabit hop. If it's in this one, it, it's inside the switch and it comes out here and it has one, one gigabit hop. So this link has a tie, meaning that the root port is going to be the one 
whose neighbor has the lower MAC address. Now, between these two, we have 00E75A and then 56 and 34, meaning this one is lower, meaning that the neighbor, this port, is actually going to be the one that is forwarded, and this one is going to be the one that is blocked. So, to review how to solve a problem like this, create it like a logic puzzle. Remember that the cost is always going to be better if the link is faster, unless there's so many hops in those links that it's not going to be a very common LAN topology for you to see. Uh, first, calculate the root bridge. All its ports are forwarded because they're designated ports. Then, look at all the other switches and calculate their root ports, which are all going to be forwarded. And then, when you've assigned root ports to the switches, you can already block off some ports because you know that not doing so would create a loop. Finally, that's going to leave links where there's interfaces on either side that, that don't directly connect to the root bridge. And in that case, you want to pick the one that has the lower cost by imagining the frame being inside the switch. It entered here, and then it's inside the switch, and it comes out along a path. You want to find the path with the best cost to the root bridge for being inside the switch that has that port. Block the other one. And then if you have a tie, you want to remember that the one that has the better neighbor is for it. Maybe a good way to think about that is um, if your neighbors are better, they're friendly people, or they have a nice place, then you want to go over and visit them more frequently than they want to go over and visit you. So that's how to solve which ports are forwarded in an STP situation on a networking exam like the Cisco CCNA.